Welcome back to the Global Business Report here on Arise News. Now, Swedish climate activist Greta Thunberg has taken part in a Fridays for Future protest on the final day of the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. Arise business correspondent Rota Sadiri has more. It is the final day of the World Economic Forum here in Davos, Switzerland, and it concludes a very interesting week with a whole number of topics very crucial to the global economy and more being discussed. This being the end of Davos uh, 2023 hasn't stopped climate activists from making sure that the world remembers that climate change is the number one issue facing the globe. Activist Greta Thunberg gathered together with other activists for their regular Fridays for Future demonstration in Davos, Switzerland, where they called for energy companies to stop any further oil projects or any extractions or face legal action. This week has seen a number of sessions discussing income inequality, discussing closing the gender gap, discussing the outlook for the global economy, and of course the ever-present war in Ukraine, which by next month, February, will have been on for a full year. That being said, Arise TV spoke with Larry Summers, former Treasury Secretary of the United States, who gave some optimistic views on the global economy and said that Nigeria is crucial to Africa and the world. This is a moment of substantial economic potential. Important shoes have not dropped. Hyperpopulism didn't win elections in the United States or Brazil. Europe has not been frozen in the way that many feared. Inflation has come down. But we've got a long, long way to go. It's very important to avoid complacency, and it's very important to make sure that everybody is included in prosperity. In that regard, I might say that 2023 is going to be a hinge year for uh, Africa. Will the global community find the necessary will for the necessary debt relief, for the necessary investments in health and education? If so, this can be the beginning of a period when Africa grows and converges towards the rest of the global economy. Given the scale of the African population at half century and even more at the century uh, mark, there are few more issue, important issues for mankind than what we do with respect to supporting Africa. And of course, Nigeria is a crucial part of all of that as the most populous country in Africa. It's been a week to remember Davos 2023 after being derailed by the pandemic for three years, returning to physical activity, physical meetups here, a lot of crucial things being discussed, over 450 sessions, over 2,700 leaders, central bank governors, finance ministers, the head of the World Trade Organization. It concludes another year with crucial topics that will be debated for the rest of 2023. Rodus Sodiri, Arise News. Well, the head of the International Monetary Fund has told Arise News that Nigeria is an important engine for growth in Africa and that when the country succeeds, so too does the continent. Kristalina Georgieva spoke to Arise business correspondent Rota Sidiri at the World Economic Forum in Davos. He began by asking if there was any possibility of revising global economic projections upwards. Uh this time we are, we are not revising projection downwards. Yes, we have done it three times uh, since October 2021, but we now see some signs of resilience. One, labor markets have been remarkably resilient and that leads to consumer spending in many economies being higher than we anticipated. Number two, China is reopening and we expect a boost in China's growth this year. Uh, number three, inflation that has been uh, quite a problem last year seems to be trending downwards. And what does that mean? It means that central banks may not have to tighten too much in this year. Uh, of course, the war in Ukraine is a big drag uh, on the world economy. That was the most important negative factor last year. It is also a tragedy for the people that suffered the consequences of this war inside UK, Ukraine. And yes, if 
we see peace in Ukraine, that would have a very positive impact uh, globally. Um, emerging markets um, have been facing a triple whammy, depreciating currencies, uh, rising inflation and debt. Uh, Mr. Akimumi Adishino, who is the president of the African Development Bank, has asked the IMF to consider transferring special drawing rights from um, developed economies over to developing economies. Are you considering that? Would that make any difference? Uh, Akin is a very dear friend and I want to express my appreciation for the great work he does for Africa. Uh, yes, not only we have considered it, but we made the call to our members that have received SDRs but are in a strong position, they don't need it, to please pass some of it through us to go on concessional terms to uh, developing economies. And I'm very uh, pleased to say that we have uh, received already $83 billion in pledges. Some of these pledges have materialized and that allowed us to start a new program for developing uh, countries, long-term concessional finance to help them with their transition to low carbon and climate resilient uh, economy. Already four countries have received support from the fund. One of them is on the African continent, Rwanda, and I will be visiting in the next days. So I can see how this program is going to support the country. Fantastic. My final question to you, Managing Director, is of course on climate change. A number of emerging markets like Nigeria and, and, and the Ivory Coast and so on are fossil fuel dependent. How can a transition to a more you know, net zero economy, how can, that, how can fossil fuel dependent nations participate in that without being penalized? Uh, it is very important to recognize uh, that uh, energy security requires today and would require for some time in the future to rely on a mix of energy uh, sources. That allows countries that are fossil fuel producers to take their time to transform their own economies. In other words, a country like Nigeria can move forward with diversification and continue to be a very important engine uh, for growth for its own people and also for Africa. We all know very well that when Nigeria succeeds, Africa succeeds. Well, the head of the World Trade Organization has told Arise News that the global trade body stands ready to support African countries in implementing the new regional free trade agreement. Dr. Ngozi okonjo iweala spoke to Arise business correspondent Rota Sadiri today at the World Economic Forum in Davos. The problem with trade from Ukraine is that they couldn't um, they couldn't carry out their trade because of the blockade on the Black Sea ports. And, uh, but where trade is now is that we've actually projected a quite a steep decrease in the growth of trade. So last year in 2022, we, project, we had a growth rate with that we projected of 3.5%. We've reduced that to 1% for 2023. Um, and there's a lot of an uncertainty around uh, that forecast. So uh, the, the, a lot depends on what happens uh, with the war in Ukraine, as you know, with climate events. Uh, um, you know, a lot also uh, depends on what happens with the way that the China is opening up. It could, there could be a, for, a further downside, actually a contraction, if things don't go well with monetary tightening by central banks. But if things go well, we could also see an upside. But right now, it's 1%. But let me say this, in spite of that, you know, trade volumes are high when we talk about uh, merchandise trade. And, and digitally delivered services trade is growing at a phenomenal rate, 14% a year. So trade will be part of the solution for bringing us out of the crisis that we're in for the recovery, uh, uh, for global recovery. Director General, I want to ask you about disputes. Three months into your tenure, China reported Australia to the WTO over tariffs on its exports to Australia. Also, they most recently reported the United States for restrictions of semiconductors exports to China. How are you dealing with disputes this year? Well, the, the, as you know, part of the function of the WTO 
is that it has a dispute settlement system, but perhaps the only one in the world, the only global one that members come to when they disagree with each other or they think that WTO rules have been violated. So of course members brought these disputes, um, but the point uh, that we're saying to them is that it's probably better uh, to try and mediation, dialogue with each other, uh, to try to resolve issues. That is far better, it's faster, and it's more amicable. Uh, so that's what we're doing. Yes, it's right, true, that there were issues with China, Australia. There were issues with, uh, with, with uh, China and Lithuania and the EU, uh, the US uh, versus uh, 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 the EU and so on. But we're encouraging dialogue first. And I think it's working. We've got the EU talking to, to uh, the US about the Inflation Reduction Act. South Korea is doing the same. Uh, so instead of bringing a dispute to the panel, they are trying dialogue. So let's see how that resolves. Now, one of the points I want to make to you, one of the issues here at Davos that is being talked about is the issue of deglobalization. The fact that the world might break into, uh, fragment into trading blocks. And if that happens, that could have a real impact on trade. And, uh, and um, we have done work at the WTO to show that if the world breaks into two trading blocks, right, decouples into two trading blocks, it would be very, very costly. We will have a 5% decrease in global GDP in the long term. And for emerging markets and developing countries, it could be up to 12%. So we have to be very careful that we do not lose the economies of scale that comes from trading in an integrated world or the technological spillovers. Because if we do by decoupling, it will be very costly. So if we want to grow and for trade to be a part, a part of it, the one thing that we're saying here at, uh, in Davos is that we must not fragment. My final question to you, Director General, is on the African Continental Free Trade Area. How do you see trade in Africa this year? Well, the African Continental Free Trade Area is still taking hold. I think it's one of the most important agreements for us or arrangements for us to have on the continent. I do not believe we can really achieve Agenda 2063 unless we implement the African continental free trade area, implement the protocol. So yes, it's important, but of course it's just beginning. I know that eight countries or seven countries have started trying to trade under, under the protocol, but again, that is at the beginning. What we need is for all our countries, now that most of them have ratified the agreement, to actually start putting it into practice because it will help solve a lot of problems. We have a big market and if we can have uh, move within such a big market, imagine if we can manufacture things or add value to our agricultural products for instance and trade within the area of 1.4 billion people for now. That's huge. So my view is that look, we trade in traffic and trade is about 15 or 16 percent. We should be looking to double this within the next de uh, decade. We should, our share of world trade is less than 3 percent, around 3 percent. We should look to double that. To do all of this, the African continental free trade area will be very important. And the WTO is working with countries to assist. We are working through the African Union to support many countries. We spent about 3.5 uh, million uh, Swiss francs supporting uh, countries to um, building their capacity to help them with their protocols, um, to help them in, in any of the areas they feel they need uh, in order to be able to uh, implement the, whatever the protocols they've agreed to within the continental free trade area. We will continue to do that as depending on the demand uh, that we have from African countries. But the WTO stands willing to help because we think it's really, really important.